Vladdy. Hi, guys. Well, from chilly Salt Lake City, Utah. It's Thank God I'm Atheist. The podcast. I'm Frank Feldman. And I'm Dan Beecher. And coming up today, Dan, a big old story broke this week. Oh, my goodness. Mormon church. We knew they had a lot of money. We have a better idea of at least... A, a corner of their empire. Yeah, exactly. If you haven't heard, how does the the, the number one hundred billion dollars sound to you? It sounds crazy. It sounds absurd. But anyway, so that's uh, we'll be getting to that in the second half of the show. Yeah. Um, because obviously, because um, everybody's been waiting for our hot take. <laughs> it's the TGIA hot take. Right. Um, so, yeah. Dan. What? Let's see. I want to start with a story that begins uh, with a sad story. Uh-oh. And we do have to get through the sad part because it lays the groundwork for the funny for part. For the fun part. Okay. <laughs> All right. We won't focus too much on the sad no, part. No, no, no. Not, not too much of the, the sad part. But, um, so... Well, I mean, is that the way to jump into the story? Yes. Uh, a, a small child has passed away. Oh, dear. Um, a two year, the two-year-old daughter of Andrew and Callie um, Heiligenthal. I think I actually did okay with that. <laughs> okay. Um, her name is Olive, or was Olive. Oh, dear. Uh, she died suddenly, unexpectedly, in her sleep. In her sleep. She just stopped breathing. Oh. Um, and so, it, of course, I mean, a small child passing away is always going to... You know, it's going to be a tragedy for yeah. any family, um, but it was also a tragedy with, that really caught them off off guard. Well, the um, Heiligenthals are a religious family. They belong to, um, <coughs> excuse me, a church called it's the it's Bethel Church in Redding, California. Okay, it's a mega church. Oh, and it sounds like it's kind of a kooky church at, 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 as well. Um, <laughs> Because, um, huh. so let, let's just get to, to what the parents did. So they have posted a uh, GoFundMe. Okay. With the goal of reaching $100,000. Well, that's a damn fine funeral. I'll tell you that. They're not looking for funeral, Dan. They're looking for resurrection. <laughs> oh, oh. And oh, and, that hurts. And my question is, what's the money for? Yeah, like like you hit a hundred thousand dollars and the, listen, blammo, she comes back to life. You hit a hundred grand, Jesus has to re resurrect her. Is this how it works? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's a money thing. Well, you I'm, never hear about wealthy people's children dying. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's exactly it where it doesn't gonna happen. Go. People with a lot more money than a hundred thousand dollars die, right? Yeah, but, but and they don't come back to but, life. But that's because they're rich, and it's easier for a rich man or for a camel and the needle and the thing than a rich. Yeah. So, yeah. so these anyway, people, the Heiligenthals or whatever their name is, um, are uh, scam sort of, artists. Well, <laughs> they are uh, influencers. Oh, they're social media influencers. They have quite the following, apparently, oh. on Instagram. Oh dear. Um, and it's all Christiany crap, right? Like right. they're not like. Oh you know. God! I should do that. I should start a Christiany Instagram. <laughs> yeah, it's, like honestly, the, with just <laughs> just load up on credulous fools, and eventually, I, I mean, it could catch fire so easy. Just mm -hmm. seems that just seems like a like yeah, well, okay, low anyway. hanging fruit. So back to this the story. Yeah. Um. The they have asked that friends, family, and other uh, others from the church gather. To pray for a miracle of resurrection, so they are they are they're also praying. Um, sure, great. So th 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 this is from a statement issued by Bethel Church, right? Uh, the basis for which, uh, so the resurrection they're talking about the resurrection. The basis for which is modeled by Jesus in the New Testament. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He, fine. Sure. He resurrected. That's like that's what people say he did in the story. Uh, yeah. Bethel Church believes in the stories of healing and physical resurrection found in the Bible and that the miracles they portray are possible today. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everyone involved here is setting, like, this is a grief-stricken couple. Yeah. Who has turned to 
the the only thing they can that, that they know fraud which is <laughs> Exactly, <laughs> and um, and so and 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 this and this church and and they're and they're like okay, and then all of a sudden everybody starts to rally around them, to the tune of as we speak, Dan. Not even a week later, they've raised fifty thousand dollars. Oh my god! I need to be bilking these idiots. What am I doing with my life? <laughs> Um, so this I, need, is, I, I, I'll try to resurrect my dad. Let's let's do it. Let's do a GoFundMe. Well, really, like Dan, what is going on? Like, uh, I think it was just last last week's show or the week prior. I I don't always have the best memory for timelines of when we talked about stuff on the show. Right. But like, just very recently, we talked about a woman in Ottawa. Yeah. Right. Or in Ontario. It was yeah. Ontario. Yeah. Um, who like kept her dead husband in the bedroom and yeah. sealed it off and the kids and like their house like mates were all praying for the guy to be resurrected. It was months that he was in there. Yeah. Decomposing. And decomposing. And it's not like they had given up. No. It was because they were being like ev- the sheriff was right. going to evict them. Right. Because they hadn't been paying their mortgage. Well, and because there's right? a and dead so, like, guy in the living room so, for like, Christ's sake. What the fuck is going on with with like a certain like really stupid segment of Christianity, right? I just I think like like we, we I mean, say that, like, but but like they are just they're the logical conclusion of this damn thing. That's the problem is that these are the people who actually believe the stories that they've read in the Bible. They're, yeah, no, these, that's probably these true. These religions don't become wildly problematic until someone actually believes in them. Yeah. And that's when things go really wrong. So the hashtag, uh, wake up olive. Oh my God. Um, has uh, been used. At, uh, th- <laughs> this article is a little old. Like when, when the article posted, it wasn't over $50,000. I looked right before we recorded to see where it was at. Uh-huh. Uh, when the article posted, I think just yesterday, it was at 36000 And it's also reporting that this hashtag has garnered um, roughly 1,500 posts on Instagram. So this is a very active uh, thing, and people are supporting it. Uh, this is from Callie Heilingenthal. Um, we believe in a Jesus who died and conclusively defeated every grave, holding the keys to resurrection power. We need it for our little Olive, who stopped breathing yesterday and has been pronounced dead by doctors. We are asking for bold, unified prayers from the global church to stand with us in belief that he will raise this little girl back to life. Oh, God. Her time was not done. It is our time to believe boldly and with confidence. We and with confidence wield what King Jesus paid for. It's time for her to come to life. What the fuck? Wow. Like that is This is brutal stuff. Oh my god. And in the history of the planet, they can point to one person who they who 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 they believe did it? Uh, uh, right. He also resurrected Lazarus, and he and and correct. So the, and we so got one guy Lazarus. with the power, right? And so, but when has it ever happened? Right, right. This shit would I be mean, happening guess, all of the time. Yeah, all of the time. Right. Just what like, every every whole truly holy person in the world would just be picking like really good people and bringing them back every now and then. Right. I mean, this is this is this is also speaks to another problem I think in our society, which is everybody just thinks they're so goddamn special, right? And so because she thinks she's so special and she believes in in magic Jesus, um, she she actually believes that Jesus is gonna let her child be the first one, and that ever that one that was posted outside of the Bible a day after, yeah. Like, there's no grieving period. There's no time for that. It was just like... They're in the throes of grief. I mean, I get it. Like, you want to take action against this horrible thing that has happened. Yeah. But you can't. No. GoFundMe is not the answer. Yeah. Oh, my God. $50,000. All right. To well, what end? <laughs> hey. Well, they'll... It'll make I mean, them feel better. They make money off of the internet. Yeah. So, there you go. You know. I mean, I, I I can't begrudge them that. Yeah, it's 
<laughs> oh my god. Uh, I just so I just turned to my story and there's this picture of the Pope and he's just staring at me and it's very it's very unsettling. Anyway, my my next story is in the Vatican. Oh yeah. Uh, you as you can guess, hmm. Pope Francis uh, has uh, has done a thing. Now I don't. I'm going to be honest. I did some research. I'm still not clear on whether this thing feels like it's a real thing or just lip service to a thing. Here's what he did. He has changed the official policy so that uh, sexual abuse, cover-ups, all of the, you know, anything involving uh, clergy and sexual abuse is no longer covered under what's called the papal secret. Oh, okay. So apparently there's a there's there's a concept of you know the pope's the pope's secret is is sort of just whatever whatever the pope decides not to talk about but it's literally just something that like the international nobody can f- force him to release documents or whatever right it's and and it's sort of the vatican's like discretion to uh to decide what what they're going to say and what i mean it is a sovereign state yeah so yeah so but um yeah so like if you had a real blab blather mouth pope who just couldn't keep secrets <laughs> he's just like oh my god i can't i just can't keep secrets pope t spiller <laughs> oh, oh, oh i'm just not good with these things i'm not gonna look i'm not oh, telling I'm you gonna... i'm not telling you anything you didn't hear this from me <laughs> but <laughs> cardinal so and so anyway uh no the pontifical secret is uh is an official thing okay. and now that ha- that no longer covers that stuff which means wow, that okay. um vatican controlled documents uh internal paperwork all of that sort of stuff can be and will be delivered theoretically to uh governing bodies a- around the world when it's related to clergy sex abuse oh well good no good. now i mean how much of clergy sex abuse paperwork gets to the Vatican? Oh, good question. So, like, there's this question of, like, does it matter because bishops still control so much of what happens in a specific diocese? Right. And, like, if the bishop has it on lockdown, right. I mean, does it matter if the right. Pope does, no longer holds it secret because he's holding it secret? You right. know what I mean? Well, and it's also, like... You know, hard to share uh, documents that have been shredded. Right. Right. And right. so I, I bet the, the Curia, like, immediately <laughs> was like, get rid of it all! Everybody's looking up. Oh, what's he doing? Get Is there a new it. Pope? Because there's smoke coming out of that <laughs> chimney. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's a, just a document. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very big fire. It's, no, that's a too big for the Pope. That's a, they burn in the documents. <laughs> oh, oh, my all right, well, Dan. Yeah. Apropos of that story. Oh, good. Or absolutely nothing. Um, <laughs> The uh, I've got a story. Uh, my little note at the stop at the top says, "Reminder that it's not only the priests." <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, this the uh, a church elder um, at a the Kirksville Church of Christ in Missouri. Mm. Um, I, I, I trust it already. Yeah. <laughs> um, he uh, he's also a professor at the uh, local state university. Uh, Truman State University. Um, he th- these stories, Dan. I typically don't never bring to the to the show. Sure, right? Because I think they're they're usually just sort of salacious and yeah. and uninteresting, and it's sort of the rehashing of the same kind of details over and over. Yeah. Uh, nonetheless, the overall the 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 concentration of really good details in this one story. <laughs> the gestalt of the oh thing. Oh my god. Um so his name is Barry Cole Porner. Pointer. Okay. Porner would be more <laughs> would be a little bit better. Uh Pointer uh 57. 
He uh, he's been charged with a Class B misdemeanor uh, count of uh, basically uh, patronizing prostitution. Oh sure, okay, like you do. Um, he faces up to six months in prison. Oh. And or a fine of up to one thousand dollars if convicted. Now, the kind of prostitution that he was engaged in has <gasps> Can I guess? What? I'm gonna guess it was a boy. Um <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you're right. Okay. But but wait, there's more. There is more. Okay. Um essentially as, as far as we can tell. Uh-huh. There's no real evidence that he ever actually succeeded in luring a boy into his little prostitutional, like, little thing. He was on Grindr. Okay. Uh, and he would sort of... Grindr's a, a, a gay dating app. A gay dating app. Where... Da- dating. Where his... We'll, you, we'll put air quotes around dating. It's where, a gay meeting app. Where he had the handle DILF. Uh, <laughs> which, interestingly enough, this article from the local newspaper mm. uh, never defines what DILF <laughs> is. I was just waiting for it to like oh. s- explain that it's a dad I like to fuck. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I just love the idea of like all of these old conservative Missouriites like going to the Google, what's a DILF? <laughs> and just being horrified <laughs> by the results. I've never heard that just word. Before. Googling DILF. Oops, image search. Oh, I've seen porn. <laughs> it's gay porn. <laughs> so anyway, so he was there he, lots of uh propositioning uh, of of young men. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um and, <laughs> oh. and, and also he took it uh what is it? Uh IRL into real life yeah yes. uh he was harassing male st- uh students at the university he worked at um and offering to pay for items for the sexual favors um from time to time i guess i don't know that was is that, that was, what makes it the prostitution is yes he's offering that's what they got him for pay? he never actually offered somebody here's five hundred dollars or here's a hundred dollars right. or here's a 50 you know whatever let's do it right it was um essentially he was offering sugar daddy relationships well um where he provide here where he would provide <laughs> gift cards clothing <laughs> um and i guess potentially money uh that's probably where they got him um but it was a sting operation he basically oh got um uh, what's that show called um to catch a predator, to catch a predator. <laughs> But wait, these so, aren't, he's not going he's, after children. He's no, going after know. adults. But so he he was chatting, unbeknownst to him, to an undercover officer. Right. Right. And he was asking for sexual favors. Favors. Yeah. Uh, in exchange for providing fuel, <laughs> right, for, he didn't know it, but for the officer's vehicle. Okay. Um, and he said that he, quote, might throw in an Arby's card. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> Arby's? <laughs> oh, sweet Jesus. This may be the saddest man on earth. <laughs> Which is This funny. is so sad. <laughs> and he's going to lose his job and he's going to lose e- everything. everything because the poor man was a stupid hypocrite and he was yeah. anti gay in his big life and then gay in his little yeah. life. And just. If he could just have been gay, if he just could have been gay, all of this would nothing, be fine. Yeah. He wouldn't it wouldn't have even even occurred to him to this, offer somebody this, Arby's. This that would never have even occurred to him if he had just been gay. He was just looking for the meats, you know. <laughs> Bada bing. <laughs> oh, yeah. What's, so what's the gayest of all of the fast food restaurants. It must be Arby's. <laughs> They've got the They've got the meats. <laughs> that's gay that's gay code, that's right? Code. That's, that's code. That's gotta be code. Something. Um yeah, I mean it, you're right. It is just really, really sad. Um but also like this is so common like I can't even believe that they would anyone would charge somebody for that. Because this is just that's just sugar daddying. That's 
Everybody does that. Well, cl- I mean, to be fair, you're I, probably right. There's probably a little bit of a homophobic thing going on yeah. at the local police department. Yeah. And they were like, you know, we can let's look for, you know, older men offering to pay for sex with younger men. Right. Lure, but it's and so luring men. Like like the idea the the difference between paying for sex and pay giving gifts in the it, in order to receive sex is right. like, well, that's the grayest of gray areas. And also, like, fuck it, sex work is great. I don't know why anybody has a problem with sex work, but well, yeah, I agree. Well, correct, <laughs> correct. Um, but but it, it's a weird. But I do think it's a. I think it's a homophobic right. it's, it's, thing. It, it's a homophobic thing. And, uh, and you know, they, they, they got him and the man was, you know, I mean, it sucks, Yeah, but But, he, sorry, he's an elder at this church, Yeah, right? The church of Christ. You fucking hypocrite. Um, and he's listed as one of three of the three elders at the church. Uh, and apparently during his time there, he's coordinated numerous, numerous events ranging from vacation Bible schools uh, to marriage counseling. Uh-huh. So that's always... Yeah. That seems like he's probably... No mention of whether he's actually married or anything like that. I oh, would assume... Uh, probably? Yeah. Being an elder in like some kind yeah, of conservative you'd, Christian you'd, church. You'd, one would imagine so. I, I would assume that he probably was. But anyway... Not for long, though. Don't yeah. worry. That won't last. He needed to just come out. Yeah. Dude, come out. It's hard. It's hard. I, it it's is hard. hard. But, but like... It's so much better. It's better than Arby's. <laughs> so much. I mean, better. I do like the curly fries. But... Look, I'm I'm not shitting on Arby's. I'm <laughs> shitting on someone who's trying to lure someone to sex with a gift card to Arby's, which is an entirely different matter and the saddest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> I mean, maybe he really likes Arby's. Maybe he thought that was like a really good. Oh my god! And the way he phrased it, like like it would be like, yeah, I'll buy you gas, but also. I mean, I, if, let me just seal the deal right now. Yeah. I, I might be willing to throw in a gift card I'm, to Arby's. Hold your horses. <laughs> hold on like, hold on to your hat because you're not ready for this. Oh. I'm going to give you I'm going to give you Arby's. I know. Get that know. beef and cheddar. All right. Um <laughs> that's so funny. Uh I here in these United States, uh we have what are called federal prisons. And that's Uh, places where people who have done very bad things are stuck for a long time. Yeah. Um, Anywho, apparently uh, several of these federal prisons, there was a there was a lawsuit a while ago uh, involving uh, a a man who was suing because uh, he was he was a Muslim inmate uh, in the United States Penitentiary McCreary. Mm. His name was William Doyle. Mm. Uh, and he was suing because the this uh, prison would not allow him to gather with other Muslims for prayer. Mm. Uh, there was there were uh, uh, rules in place that would say they they could only pray up to three at a time maximum. They had to ask permission whenever they wanted to gather three people to pray. Wow. And uh, and I, I, I guess communal prayer is a big deal in Islam. Mm. according to them okay uh so they sued so he sued in federal court uh and lost uh but then um so so muslim advocates which i guess is a is a group advocating for muslims so well named i would think uh they represented doyle in an appeal and the appeals court uh, well, I guess they haven't even gotten to that part yet because the appeal itself was enough to trigger the uh, the Bureau of Prisons to revise its recommendations on Muslim prayer. Oh, and okay. now uh, you still have to ask permission, just just as you do with all gatherings. Hmm. But as long as uh, but but this regu- this is not a regulation. This is a guideline that has gone out to all of the federal prisons. Okay, but all of the federal prisons, the guideline is now. That uh, as long as it's not going to interrupt uh, safety and or calm within or 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 you know security within the prison, they can they can now gather together and where pray. do they gather? Does it say? 
I'm 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 gonna say the the, the yard. The yard. Maybe, maybe it's maybe it's the uh, the mess hall. <laughs> I have no idea. What do I, what am I a prison expert? I don't know. Well, you're the one with the goddamn the, story. The chapel. I'm they sure they would be in the chapel. They have to be in the chapel. That's where Jesus lives. <laughs> they love that place. But yes, right. uh, you'll be shocked to learn that up until now, things have not been equitable between various religions in this uh, in the prison system. Hmm. Shocking, isn't it? Well, I mean, that's a good step, I guess. Yeah. You know, good. I think so. They, they have human rights still. Yeah. You know. One one person's so imaginary friend is not rights. better than another person's imaginary yeah. friend. That's what we're trying to get at. Right. Yeah. Human rights that don't conflict with their incarceration. Yeah. Why not? Absolutely. Basic rights. Yeah. I mean, it's so stupid. It's so stupid to just si- just single out this group of people because you obviously are prejudiced well, against them. Well, were they having like groups of Christians asking for the same thing, right? Like, Well, groups of Christians do meet. But they go to the chapel. I guess. I don't know. I don't know if they go I don't to a chapel. And I don't know how you say that. I don't know how that works. I don't either. Anyway. All right, Dan. Yeah? Uh, a uh, There's a new... Christmas classic this year, Dan, on, on Netflix. Oh, I think um, I've heard about this. Yes, um, and it's one that I'm going to go <laughs> home immediately and watch. I've not had a chance. It's yet to only watch a it. shame that Jimmy Stewart wasn't alive to be in this. <laughs> I think. <laughs> well, uh, we, yes, we'll uh, let everybody you know judge for themselves. Um, it is a Portuguese language Christmas Christmas special called uh, the First Temptation of Christ. Okay, um, and it is. <laughs> Apparently, uh, packed to the gills with um, sort of um, gay and in, gay innuendo, uh-huh. um, and su- suggestions that Jesus has a gay lover. Right. Um, it tells the story of Jesus returning from home or returning home from the desert for his thirtieth birthday. Okay. Um, and uh, let's see, Mary and God are portrayed as illicit lovers. Oh, Joseph is a bumbling carpenter who can't build a table. Okay, uh, and the three kings try to pass off ham as free-range soy. <laughs> uh, that's just some of the fun little antics that are going on. Um, but he, uh, r- Jesus, returns uh, from the desert um, with a friend. Uh-huh. He brings along a f- uh, flamboyant male companion named Orlando. <laughs> Um, and apparently this character at every opportunity, uh, implies that he and Jesus are romantically, uh, you know, Uh involved with each other. Right. And, um, apparently at one point he calls him a naughty Capricorn. Oh, you're bad. Oh, you naughty Capricorn. You're bad. Um, so I'm going to sick my disciples on you. <laughs> so I guess Orlando uh, at one point begins to describe how the pair met. Uh-huh. Uh, he says, I was, I was bathing in an oasis and I was <laughs> naked. Uh, at which point Jesus sort of you know, cuts him off and was like, and then I asked him for directions. Uh-huh. I asked and he gave it to me. And he's like, I, you bet I did. Oh, and then he's uh, naughty yeah so anyway uh well as you would expect (laughs) um this has not gone over terribly well with conservative christians oh my god um i guess one of the highest profile critics of uh the show um is eduardo uh, bolsonaro he's son of uh the brazilian president oh bolsonaro yeah 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 um and He's, uh, he's, I guess, a far right figure himself. Right. Uh, who has, uh, well, I guess Bolsonaro, the, the president, uh, has described himself as a proud homophobe and said that he would <laughs> right. prefer to have a dead son to a gay son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just the standard run of the mill sure. stuff that presidents of nations say these days. Right, right. Uh, if you're um, a head of state, you you can't be a good head of state without. <laughs> overtly stating your hatred for some kind of group a percentage of your of the populace of your country 
Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Was there uh, so the group that did the ske- the 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 show is a sketch comedy group uh-huh. uh, called uh, Porta dos Fundos. Uh, the tra- that means back door. Oh. Um, and I guess they've been they've had other um, irreverent skits and whatnot. Weird. Uh, they did, they did a, a a show. Uh, I guess last year. Uh, called the last hangover uh which uh, is about jesus's apostles <laughs> after a heavy night of drinking oh <laughs> <Aww. laughs> yeah um and then when uh, you've got a friend who can turn water into wine why not i'm guessing you're getting plastered a lot <laughs> <laughs> just getting back to some of the content in the show um let's see there's a mary smokes a joint good uh one of the wise men hires a sex worker great um jesus gets high off some special tea oh yeah during which he sort of uh, hallucinates uh meeting meeting the buddha krishna uh etc it's oh and 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 an alien deity for scientologists so it just sounds like the absolute best time yeah and i am i am just promoting it he gets to meet xenu i can't i I can't offer uh like a review like a critique yet a critique of the show i am going to say this without having seen it Uh uh-huh um it's probably pretty bad yeah it feels it feels (laughs) like the camp level is turned up to Right. It's turned all the way around and come back around yeah. to the... To yeah. The, now, I like camp. Yeah. I like a good campy show. I I, I, I will definitely give this You should tweet about it on, on the TGIA oh, Twitter. Oh, I should. Yeah, I will. Frank, Frank will watch and tweet. Uh, I'll live this. tweet. Oh, you should live tweet it. I won't. Oh, I know. Because I can't do to because like it's also going to be subtitled yeah that's true you'll be right. reading the whole time i'll be reading and oh, yeah. it just doesn't work there you go okay well i have some very interesting news uh that just came about uh which is to say there was an op-ed in the uh the christian in christianity today mm-hmm. this is uh this is a a, a a billy graham's uh publication Christianity Today. It's a it's an evangelical uh, Christian uh, publication. Graham. Is it like a? I don't know if it's a newspaper newsletter. Or, it's a something. Uh, it's yeah. They've uh, they've been they've been going for decades though. They've been around for forever. They're one of the top Christian uh, publications. Anyway, magazine. Is it a magazine? I'm going to say yes. Yeah, we're just going to go with that. Okay. Right. And then if if we need to, we'll just d- say that we were defining that word as loosely as possible. It's a periodical. It's a periodical. It's a whatever. Anyway, they published, they do- they typically don't do this, but they've, they've published a political opinion. Now this oh. begins by saying, we never do this. This is not our thing. We want to let all the Christians decide for themselves what their politics are right. and, and and how that lines up with their own Christianity. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's not for us to say. No, no. Why? They would never presume. No, no. Uh, but they have decided that this was important enough that they needed to declare their position. They think Trump should be removed from office. <gasps> I beg your pardon. Are you Okay. I need a minute. Because that's just some crazy shit right there. Billy Graham's evangelical Christian publication has come out and said outright that he should be removed. What got them going, what got them, what, fi- what, what made this happen was that apparently somebody was aware of what they wrote 20 years ago about one President Billiam Clinton. Yeah. In, in which they, they were unequivocal about how if he's going to lie this much and if he's going to lie when he's under pressure and blah, 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 then he's not worthy of the seat of the president. Well, guess who's lying a lot right now? Wow. Yeah. And so, wait, 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 wait. What, what has actually just shocked me more is that you have some Christians being consistent. I know! Non-hypocrisy... To the point of like pissing off millions of their of their readership. So is that the reaction? I is don't there, know. Is there I assume. I mean, because like, I mean, that's the thing though with influential publications and influential 
figures mm. within sort of a community is that by them doing this, it actually gives cover to the people who were a little uncomfortable. Right. The right. Pe- you mean the people who, the, like who the, the would agree with The evangelicals out there who were just kind of just like biting their tongue, you know. Not when, sure when, what to say. When their neighbor's like going off, they're up, you know, or right. somebody they go to church with is going off about, you know, we got to protect Trump. We got to pray for Trump. We got to right. get out there. They're trying to take him down. Trump, God appointed Trump and all this like nonsense. Like for like that, that person just with their own little opinion right they just they know that everybody's against it right but for them to be able to say well you know i agree with christianity today and their statement right right it gives them cover and those people now have a little bit of safety in coming out and saying that they don't like trump yeah because let me tell you it's not a monolithic thing this evangelicalism no and it's not filled with a bunch of of as much as we would love to believe it and as much as we paint them all with the same you know brush on this show right there are intelligent you know i'm sorry back up there are semi-intelligent people (laughs) right no there are there are within that group some very intelligent people yeah i just i it i love that they had to quote themselves in order to justify this position. Right. Uh, they quoted themselves uh, from 1998 when they wrote, uh, you know, they wrote things like, the president, this is about Clinton. Right. The president's failure to tell the truth, even when cornered, rips at the fabric of the nation. This is not a private affair. For all. For above all, social intercourse is built on the, a presumption of trust. Trust that the milk your grocer sells you is wholesome and pure. Trust that the money you put in your bank can be taken out of the bank. Trust that your baby blah, 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 blah. Right. And and while politicians are notorious for breaking campaign promises, while in office they have a fundamental obligation to uphold our trust in them and to live by the law. Now, I think that their take on Bill Clinton, because all they were talking about was a little bit of sexual indiscretion and then not being entirely truthful about that which shouldn't have been on the table as a discussion anyway right however if they're gonna say that about clinton for that they have to say they have to say it about trump yeah and and then they they quoted themselves on this too i love this quote unsavory dealings and immoral acts by the president and those close to him have rendered this administration morally unable to lead yeah so that's the quote that they put yeah. from themselves back in in 97 yeah. or 98. Now and then immediately after that they their quote from this year is unfortunately the words that we applied to Mr. Clinton 20 years ago apply almost perfectly to our per- current president. Good for them. May, may there be a few more organizations and yeah. and, and you know figures and what not it, step forward with, yeah. with, with this opinion right now. Where where are this, these people? This is the base that everybody's terrified of. This is the right? people This are, is what yeah. this is why the Senate, why everybody's just like, oh no, there's no way that, that they'll ever that they'd ever convict this man because of the base. Yeah. They're terrified of the fucking base. Right. That's it. And I'm all about that base, about that base. <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah, uh, no, I just think it's amazing. I, st- I mean, the Senate's still not going to convict him. No, but- no, 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 no. I know. But However, like, but just to have a few Republican senators break rank and actually, like- it's, it's just like if this, if this, where are these people? I've been waiting for these people to show up. Well, where are the up. conservatives who are willing, who have any backbone whatsoever, who were, who need, who know that this guy needs to be. There they the are. Box. Well, there they are. There they are, Dan. Well, folks, if, if you have any thoughts about this or any of the stories that we've talked about today, we want to hear from you. Uh, please write into us, podcast at thankgodamatheist.com. Or call and leave us a voicemail message. The telephone number is 424-666-8442. Yeah, go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash TGIA Atheist. Click on that like button. And while you're there, search for the TGIA Members Only Lounge. And request to join it is a closed group, but we will let you in. Roger that. Hey, Dan. 
Oh, uh, yes. So we were just talking about a group of Christians that have decided to be consistent. Yes. Consistency is uh, is the hallmark <laughs> of the modern Christian. I, I would not say that. I would say, in fact, it's probably the opposite. <laughs> wait, uh, wait. Do the... you have any way of backing that up <laughs> other than the story that you told yeah, 15 minutes I'm, ago? Uh, we are going to turn to... Uh, one Mr. Pat Robertson. Oh, Patty we're gonna boy. Pay, we're going to play two different clips. Yeah. Um, and I think we're just going to run them back to back. <laughs> um, and so the first clip, if you'll recall back uh, just, what, a little over a year ago? About, yeah, yeah. It was it was last year, uh, around a little earlier, but but sort of around this time because yeah. it was it was hurricane season. Yeah. And Hurricane Florence was uh, pointed directly at Virginia. Yeah. At the time, and, and which of course is where CBN, Pat Robertson's television network, and Regent University, yeah. Regent College, Regent University. Uh, he probably calls it a university. Yeah, I'm sure right. he does. Um, and uh are located and so he was he he had this little uh meeting where he's up at the pulpit and he starts he start well you'll hear it he rebukes the hurricane it would look it the optics on his uh empire being run down by a by a hurricane are just too are just not good <laughs> and then anyway we're, and then we're gonna cut to a clip of him from just a couple days ago uh and see where, and see you know, what he has to say. He has an opinion on, on such things, things. On yeah. various things. Yeah, yeah. On the weather. Let's hear it. I don't want that thing to come in. I don't want it to hurt region. I don't want it to hurt CBN. I don't want it to tear up these beautiful campus. I don't want to tear these trees down. I don't want to see any damage. I don't want a bunch of glass flowing. And I don't want all over this area that's counting on us to pray for them. So I'm going to ask you right now, Put your hand out toward the Atlantic, wherever it is, and let's speak a word right now. In the name of Jesus, we declare a shield of protection all over Tidewater, and we declare a shield of protection over those innocent people in the path of this hurricane. In Jesus' holy name, be out to sea, and we will live to mark this day and say, I remember I was there, and when we saw that Hurricane Florence averted, we're gonna believe God. And Jesus said, if you, when you speak to the mountain and you don't doubt in your heart, it will do the thing that you command it to do. And I believe it in all my heart that if we don't doubt in our faith, this hurricane will be dispelled. We saw it happen in 1960. I've seen it in year after year after year. Hurricanes tried to get in here and they couldn't do it. It's almost hilarious to see them try. They try to get in and they can't, and they go north and they turn around and try to come back in, they can't do it. God has put a shield around it. And that shield has been reactivated today. We are not going to let Hurricane Florence hurt us. In Jesus' name. God didn't cause it. It's part of the nature that we live in. And the hurricanes and the wind uh, they're natural and they actually are good because they release heat in our planet and they bring cooling, they bring rain, and rain is beneficial. So I don't know what else you're saying, but that's the best I could do, okay? That doesn't cause it, but he does use it. Well, of course he uses it, but I mean, to, you know, God sets certain natural laws in place then to say he's a move on everyone that he's sitting there and then manipulating the weather. I don't think he does that. God damn it, Patty. <laughs> Man, it's like if those see if if those clips had been ten years apart. Oh yeah. He'd you grown. could just be you could he'd just be like you could you know consider. Yeah. Right. Or his his theology has morphed or whatever. But here's the thing. This is not the first time he's done this exact flip flop. Right. He was saying Oh, like ten years ago, he was say, he did say something about like the hurricanes or the the hurricanes that were were that were uh, it was Katrina. It was Katrina. Katrina. All about gay people was right? because in, of gays in in Las right or, uh, and in New, in New Orleans. New Orleans, right? Yeah. yeah, all of that devastation was was because of gays and abortions. Right. Then he then when a bunch of tornado somebody wrote into him and asked about tornadoes in the Bible Belt, and right. he was like. Pfft. That's just weather. Let me explain this to you. 
there's look when the heat when the hot air comes down <laughs> there is a, what what you get is an updraft and when there's a cold front uh, that moves in blah blah and he literally such, goes into like such a it's kind meteorological of detail it's a hobby of his yeah. meteorology right yeah. He's, he's read a few books so he topic. he when it's convenient yeah he goes like he is a slalom skier on this run. Yeah, he is just shushing back. And forth. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I love she says something because he's like he's like oh yeah it's just weather it's just weather right right yeah yeah and she's like well I mean he doesn't cause it but he uses it what the fuck does that mean well it means she's confused because she knows full well that he thinks that God causes it. <laughs> She's but like, no, what she's the saying, well, okay. fuck are you talking about? So he doesn't cause it, but he uses it? Yeah, he's, he's, so, she's trying to get him out of the hole right. that he has just dug for himself. And he's like, no, 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 just dump that dirt back on top of me. <laughs> I am I need this hole. I love this hole. Uh, he, need, he needs handlers who actually have some authority <laughs> over him. No one has authority. And nobody has authority How over him. How dare you? <laughs> No one has authority, especially not one of those women over that he Pat goes on Robertson. the show with. That's why he goes on the show with women. That's right. So he can, so he can just explain some stuff to him. Give him what for? Yeah, <laughs> and then he'll order them to go make him some food <laughs> or something. Anyway, let's go on. We had some folks write into us. Uh, EWA wrote into us and said, "My two cents on being an atheist and dealing with religions and people of other cultures." You recall that we were talking about how uh, religion and religious oh, yeah, festivals charming. can intrude on our lives. That's a thing yeah, that can if happen if you don't speak their language. It's charming. <laughs> well, here's what EWA says: uh, Be a good neighbor. If you're a good neighbor to me, I will be a good neighbor back. If your neighbor has a procession once a year, done safely uh, with the right permits, I'll be a good neighbor and be tolerant of it. <laughs> Flashing if, lights. Yeah, right? <laughs> if a Native American tribe wants to keep sacred, la sacred land off limits to non-tribe members, I'll be a good neighbor and respect their requests. Nice. But if religious people stand on a street corner yelling at me that they think I'm going to hell, they are not being a good neighbor and I do not need to be tolerant of it. If politicians use their religion to justify removing civil li liberties, then they are not being a good neighbor, and I do not need to be tolerant of it. Nice. I think that's okay. a, a Fair enough. valid point of view. Some, yeah. Uh, Tim wrote into us. Tim said, that the next time you wheel out the weapons grade crazy like Sheila, this was last week. Oh, yeah. Sheila, what was her name? I can't remember her Somebody. last name. Yeah. Sheila Crazyhead. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it needs to have a trigger warning, is what Tim says. <laughs> I was listening while riding my bike down a long, steep hill. I had no way to pause or fast forward through it. <laughs> felt like Alex in a clockwork orange. Man, that woman is nuts. <laughs> You can't it, just listen to it. Ah, <laughs> ah, get it out of my ears! <laughs> But, says Tim, <laughs> the thought that came to me was that none of the threats she was so worried about was real. It was like she was reading the index of a book of strange belief beliefs from around the world. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, none of any of it is real. Will, this, will the angels from above and the spirits in the earth and the <laughs> just hex and I bind vex and the... The the evil demons that are gonna oh right and then and she, she goes into all like the rhymey stuff yeah she goes into she spells incantations she falls That's into in, yeah exactly yeah. into Doctor I mode. have Newt <laughs> 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 so, why was she not doing I have Newt stuff yeah just she, she someone buy that woman a cauldron <laughs> she needs a cauldron <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh, Reverend Jim Bob wrote into us. Uh, in response to your worry that we may lose cultural celebrations if religion goes away, don't worry. <laughs> a few years ago, I was in San Francisco with my ex-wife going out to dinner when we were trapped in a sudden parade. When it was over and we got to the restaurant in Chinatown, we asked what the parade was for, and our waitress of Chinese extraction said, Chinese Independence Day. I asked, for which China? She said, mainland China. There will be a Taiwanese one next weekend. Same people. Any excuse for a damned parade. 
Mainland independence, Taiwan independence, <laughs> Chinese New Year. Drop a hat around here and someone will throw a parade and set off some firecrackers. Nice. So I wouldn't worry about it. There are plenty of reasons for cultural celebrations yeah. that we can all enjoy even without the religious Fair ones. Fair enough. Yeah, exactly. We'll, we'll just use the Chinese ones. Yeah. We'll just appropriate. That's always a good idea. It's right? what we do. Yeah. It's kind of our gig. I mean, Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> Cinco de Drinco. <laughs> oh, my God. If you say that, by the way, stop saying the Cinco de, de oh, Drinco yeah, thing. Not good. Uh, anyway, not uh, good. hi, Frank and Dan. This, is, uh, this one is from Anastasia. I've been a listener for a while now and felt compelled by the power of the sun to write in response to your Christmas blues episode. Mm -hmm. You remember we talked about how sad people can get mm -hmm. around this time I of know. year? What with it being so dark and all? Well, it ain't dark everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I live, says Anastasia, in Australia. And ah. unlike where you are, Christmas is a time of baking sun and a Santa who could, who should be in boardies. I assume that means board shorts, like some sort of... Maybe. Yeah, sounds about right. trunk sort of yeah. scenario. Boardies? We don't say boardies here. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I have summers here. I, I hate summers here. Oh. As they've gotten increasingly hot and dry. For oh, example, yeah. next week is forecast to be over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Thanks for the translation there. Yeah. Uh, for four days in a row, and it's not even high summer yet. Oh, God. I live in Adelaide Hills and already had stuff packed to evacuate because of a day of forecast catastrophic fire danger. Oh, a combination God. of high winds and high temperatures. Oh, God. Summer and Christmas for me means not being able to go outside because the dry heat makes everything too hot to touch. We have, we have to take extra precautions to ensure our animals are safe and in shade with plenty of water, including putting out buckets of water for local wildlife and birds to access. Oh. Christmas in the summer here means still... Cooking a full turkey, a full turkey dinner, even though it's stinking fucking hot and no one in their right mind would do this. Summer depresses me because I'm essentially trapped inside with the air con on. Oh, I love listening to you both. Anyway. Yeah. It's hard all over. Uh, but at least it's summer. Yeah. It's so cold. Just go to the beach. Put on, you gonna do that? Put on almost nothing and enjoy your life. <laughs> we have to bundle up so much. Oh Ugh. my god! No kidding. Uh, yeah. Anyway, it was so cold the other morning. <laughs> it's been cold all the morning. Yeah, exactly. There was it's one not... though that was so cold. Yeah. yeah. And it's just gonna get worse. That's just gonna get worse before it gets better. Dan, don't say that. It's the truth. I can't help it. It's I don't create the weather. Weather, yeah. and neither does God. Yeah. That job belongs to Pat Robertson. <laughs> And he's making it too cold. Oh. Now, I, I'm going to launch this next bit because I have someone to thank mm -hmm. before you get to your someone to thank. Oh, okay. Uh, right. Bridget has become a faithful listener on PayPal. Oh, fantastic. So thank you so much to Bridget. Well, we have a new faithful uh, listener over on Patreon. Okay. Uh, Kale. Well, hello thank you, to Kale. Kale. Now, these two fine people did. They went to thankoutamatheist.com and clicked on the support tab. Clicked on the Dan and Frank will love me more tab. <laughs> <laughs> and then they signed up uh, for whichever platform they felt better for them. And at a level that, that, that fits what, what they're, how they're looking to support the show. Yes, indeed. Um, and if you if you do go over to Patreon, there are different levels of rewards. You can gain access to a natural version of the show, etc. Um, and, of course, you always get our undying thanks. Yeah. Um, speaking of which. Speaking of which, we do have our Lord and Savior, our top donor, Dan, Davis! Woo -hoo -hoo! Thanks, guys. Thank you. Oh, Franklin. Oh, my God. Oh, Franklin. Um, uh, listen, I know as soon as everybody saw this story, they all knew we would have to talk about it. <laughs> we being uh, former Mormons or oh. foremans ourselves. Yeah. Uh, when the story broke in the Washington Post yeah. that a whistleblower had decided to blow the whistle on one of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints' 
auxiliary companies right of which they have several right uh it's big news yeah uh and the big the big headline <laughs> that was the number yeah. that they that this whistleblower threw out which is apparently backed up by a whole bunch of uh of supporting documentation yeah that this one uh enzyme peak advisors which is a tax exempt subsidiary of uh-huh. the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Established as a charity. Established as a as a charity is ha- ha- hoarding yeah. like Smaug the Dragon a <laughs> hundred billion dollars. Unbelievable. I mean it's perfectly believable. It's, it's more, yeah, it's, if you know this church, like, you know that, that that number doesn't surprise you too much. Right. Except that a hundred billion dollars is just a lot of money no matter who you hear it from. Yeah. Doesn't matter where what it's about, like right. But you got but just to throw it a little bit into perspective, um, that is essentially it's. I think it's slightly more money than if you were to combine um, the Harvard endowment, right, and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation's <laughs> funds, right. And I believe it's somewhere like it's still just slightly more. Yeah, and it's like what in the fuck are they up to right but the but the reporters found out what they're up to they're saving for the second coming of christ (laughs) they're up to fuck all which is amazing because like there's no no dan they the church yeah they legitimately said that this money is not for you know paying for the church which they could do well, right yeah. with the proceeds from this this one fund they could actually fund the church right yeah right? exactly never in taken to never taken a dollar of tithing right. money ever again and right. still be fine but no 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 this fund is for the second coming of christ well let me tell you that's something. what it's for have you ever have you ever put on a second coming of of, of a deity <laughs> because it's an ex- an expensive affair. Ah, oh, you know, it takes it takes a lot of smoke machines. You gotta be. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It look. You gotta do. You gotta have cameras in in Jerusalem. You yeah. gotta have cameras in uh, Moscow. You yeah. gotta you gotta be yeah. all over the world. It is an organized Live satellite feeds. Oh, every which way. Yeah. Yeah. Lasers. You're gonna have. You're gonna just. I mean, the fireworks budget oh, alone. My God, no kidding. And I think you got to do it for the full millennium. <laughs> just keeps going. <laughs> okay, so what we have here, and just so that if you if you didn't hear about this, the reason that uh, a whistleblower matters in this case is that the whole point in this country anyway, of a quote unquote charitable organization or with religious affiliation, which means that they, they have a, they, they, they have, is that they have to go, they have a mission. Yeah. A charitable mission. Yeah. And all of the money that they bring in, or at least the money that they have must be used. Yeah. For that charitable mission. And in like like in a proportionally viable way to their holdings correct and there is some from again some of the things i've gathered um it, it, it's it's a loose sort of definition there like it's not like they they say it must be x percentage and more right like it's it's just sort of understood you have a mission you go about using these funds for that mission yeah right and it doesn't have to be like some vast like it doesn't have to be like a majority of the money no right no i mean like it just has to be a significant amount to to show that you are legitimately a charity right well let's just back up a little bit how much money of this has have they ever used from this fund for charity dan i can i can actually give you that exact figure off the top of my head oh really and normally i'm not good at that because (laughs) Numbers kind of bounce off of me like I'm made of rubber. But in this case, I can give you that number because it is zero. Zero. They have never paid None. out anything. No, in fact, the only expenditures that they've had, and this is where they also have a major, major, major problem. Yeah. Is that they used about $2 billion from this fund to prop up two different 
church owned companies. One, these are for profit companies. For profit companies. Yeah. So this is completely inappropriate unless they kept it as they could have given them loans. They could have kept it as a liability on, right. on their on, on, on their books, but they didn't, right? They just gave, they them, just the money. gave them the money. And so so that so apparently the insurance company, yeah. Beneficial Life Insurance, right. um, got uh I can't remember what they said. Oh, it was over uh, it was, half a billion it was, dollars. It was in the hundreds of millions. Hundreds of millions of Wasn't dollars. Wasn't it? Yeah, because so, the the mall that they hadn't finished building yet, that it, it was a bad time. Yeah. The, re the recession was, was going on. There was a recession. On. And, you know, there were overages. And so they spent an extra uh, $1.4 billion on the mall. Now, guys, if you ever come to Salt Lake City... It is a really nice mall. Oh, it's fine. It's oh no, dude. It's, it's as got far a, as malls go. It's got a river that yeah. goes through it with that's stocked with trout. <laughs> I guess what I mean by it's a nice mall is that you can see every dollar spent on it. Oh yeah, you you know what's yeah exactly. It is it is an expensive mall. Yeah, it's right. a it's a as, mall that you don't even know if it's an indoor or an outdoor mall because it's got roofs. it's got retractable roofs. Yeah. It's basically a sports stadium for shopping. <laughs> the sport well, of shopping. Sport, yeah, for some people it is, Dan. Oh, you've met my wife. We know. <laughs> anyway, but the point is <laughs> uh the point is that uh en Enzyme Peak Advisors mm -hmm. is not set up as a as a bailout for uh for that. Yeah. They are set up to, as a charitable organization, as an auxil auxiliary, I don't know the mall. They were needy. They were. It was they so. Were. It was needy, Dan. And yeah. same with the. But get this. Did you get pick up on the details about beneficial life? So the church, like, like it is a known thing. The recession hit. The beneficial life was really exposed with like some bad like um, investments that they had done. Sure. And they were in deep in like the, all that mortgage crap. Yeah. Um. That you know, cause the economy to tank. Um, and so that's what, that's why they had to be bailed out. Well, nobody really knew how much money the church had just dumped in. And so the heads of beneficial life took the opportunity to lay off like 50% of the company. Yeah. They didn't have to. <clears throat> no, they just got hundreds of millions of dollars just pumped into them. I know. Let's just lay off some people too. They Thanks church owned company. Yeah. So, Okay. The church did this. The Catholics we talked about a couple weeks ago. Mm. We just found out that their their big charitable wing, yeah, had also just been funneling money. They they, they weren't hoarding it. They were just funneling it into like, there it, it, it well into the ether. There were there's some cardinals that are on some some ships right now, <laughs> very happy with their yacht private ships, right? Private yachts, yeah. Um, but here. When you have an endowment this large, leave it to the Mormons. At least somebody go off and be a playboy in you know on the Mediterranean. At least the car the Catholics know that much. <laughs> Hoarding this much money, it's unconscionable for an event that they don't know when it'll right. happen. Right, and I mean I don't even well, believe that that's what they were thinking. The thing is. No one's trying to deny you from having a rainy day fund or from having a big fund. Or, as Mitt Romney put it, a rainy decade fund. Right? And I was actually like, well done, Mitt Romney. Yeah. I, fine. He, but he was like, but I, I think it's good. I think it's good they have a rainy day fund. Well, in this case, maybe a rainy decade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, a uh, hundred billion, that'll last you a while. Yeah, no it's, shit. It's like, you know... It, no one's saying you can't you can't have money because as somebody pointed out that I read charity is a cyclic is a counter cyclical thing when things get worse for people when people need the most charity that's when the least money comes into the charity you know what i mean so it's like sure so so yeah but you like, need you need to be ready for that mind you are they doing charity work with this? They're not. Fuck no. Right. Even if they were using this, all they would be doing is building more churches, building more temples. Right. Like the, so here's the deal. The church had an official response to this whole thing. Yeah. And while they denied that they've done anything wrong tax-wise and this and that, blah, 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 there were a couple things that stood out. They never 
anywhere in the statement said it's this 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 sum is ludicrous no they never right? denied the sum so at all. i feel like the sum has been confirmed yeah absolutely by, by the their, their failure to address it um and then the other thing is that they once again brought up the amount of charity work that they do, right? <laughs> which, which is in the sum of about 40 to $50 million a year, which is a, f it, that's a great sum. But mm -hmm. if you look at, the, so the guy who, this whistleblower, he says that this fund, this $100 billion fund, has a return rate, an annual return rate of about 7%, right? Yeah. You could easily, give away a, a couple billion dollars a year yeah. and this thing would be perfectly fine. It would keep growing. It would be yeah. beating inflation if that's even a concern when you have that much money. Right. Like, like they would be fucking fine yeah. giving away literally billions of dollars a year. Yeah. One of the greatest forces, private forces for humanitarian aid and support that has ever been known. It would be the greatest one ever. Done. Yeah. And they haven't done it. They haven't done jack shit. Here's the thing. Is $40 it, million dollars of charity work, which they also include their own internal numbers in that. Figure, right. Yeah. Which is the support that they're giving to their own members. Oh, they don't through, give much support to anyone but their own members. Right. Like this, it's, they do it's an minuscule. occasional occur, hurricane thing. Right. Uh, some aid, but, whatever. But yeah, they literally, if, with, if you've got... A hundred billion dollars sitting around and you are giving away 40 million and your mission, quote unquote mission is charity. You have, you, you are failed Satan miserably. Yeah. You are evil. Yeah. Because that, because you're right. Even if they just wanted to maintain an insane amount of, of, of maintain grow. Yeah. They could easily let it they grow. They could keep growing to, obscene numbers right. and then maybe maybe it's three billion a year that they're giving away maybe then it's five billion right because they have that much goddamn fucking money because 40 Hoarded. million dollars is nothing no. 400 million dollars is nothing we're talking about they could give away four thousand million dollars yeah yeah that's insane yeah. it it it's infuriating and uh and also by the way Lest anyone be uh, dancing too happily at the news of this whistleblower, yeah, it's unlikely that anything's going to actually happen. Right. The, the you know the IRS has been alerted. They've been given supporting documents. Yeah. They now could, if they wanted to, audit the church. Yeah. Will they? Big question. Yeah. Lord knows we've been watching. You know, you and I have been reporting on. We've been on the beat. Right. On the religion beat for eight years now. Yeah. And we have seen time after time religions just thumbing their nose at the IRS. Yeah. Daring, literally, literally, not figuratively, daring the IRS to come after them. Yeah. And the IRS hasn't done shit. Yeah. So I'm not holding out any hope that anything will come of this. Right. Anything. Well, you say that and... I would I would I would immediately run to the things that um, this does do. Okay, one, um, there's always a a group of Mormons who's sort of on the fringe. Mm -hmm. They don't know whether they should be sticking around, but they haven't. The thing that's going to get them out hasn't happened yet. They're waiting for that straw to they're, break. That they're back. waking exactly. This broke some backs. This broke some shelves in sort of the ex-Mormon lingo. Right? Yeah. And um, like this, um, and that's huge. Yeah. And, and it's going to continue happening with the church. B bad news and bad actions keep happening from this organization. And in the next group of people who's who are in line to leave the church, they leave the church. Right. And this is going to be another... You know what was the the November decision thing with the oh, baptisms yeah. for yeah. you know and and this is just it is exactly like that. It's just gonna hit gonna reach a different set of people yep. than that kind of stuff hits. And in addition to that, the number two great takeaway here is it's just bad fucking press for the LDS Church. Mm -hmm. And that those two things are the things that make me happy about <laughs> this just... because I would love to see them get hit. 
but we know that their money is so tucked away in a thousand different secure yeah, places. This isn't even this all is one. This is a percentage right. of their wealth, and it's probably the 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 lion's share. But it, as would, far as like yeah, hoarded, unused. But there are other billions do, billion dollars worth, other billions of dollars worth of assets. Absolutely. Well, assets. I mean, you, you, good lord, right. the things that they own. Yeah. Right. Like, I mean, just the, their real estate alone. Real estate alone. The 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 billions. The actual like it's an actual legit whole number percentage of the state of Florida. Like <laughs> like might be clo- like ten percent or something. Like <laughs> they they own massive amounts of like. Multiple states. I think right. Wyoming. They have like massive ranch holdings. In they Wyoming. own basically a, a they, county in Missouri. Yeah, like the the. So that's just just physical land. This. I mean, I guess it's making some money thanks to ranching and yeah. orange groves and whatnot. But like, um, yeah, they shopping malls. Yeah, and and then like for profit things like insurance companies. Yeah, right, and. And and multimedia companies, right? They own newspapers. They own. Yeah. I don't know how many TV stations. They used to own a lot of TV stations. I yeah. think they've they've kind of gotten out of that business a little bit. They still own a lot of radio stations, from my understanding. The point is, like this. This is, is a church. Yeah. This yeah. is a, a so-called church. Yeah. The so-called church. The point That's is, a... eat your heart out, Joel Osteen, is what the point <laughs> is. Jesus, this is like, this is. Does the money? If prosperity doctrine is what you're into, then you should r- go running to the Mormons right now. Except that they never never promise anything to I anybody. Know. That's what's yeah. amazing. They promise to take your money. Yeah, that's true. That's about it. And th- and the other. Oh God. You know what? The other thing that's really infuriating. We need to end this segment. <laughs> the other thing that's really infuriating about this is that this is this is the same church that like within the last year they were telling people starving people in Africa. Yeah. Continue to pay your tithing, yeah. and the blessings will come. Right. This is they, the tr- you do not need to tell poor people to pay their tithing anymore. You can no. just get rid I, of that. I mean, it, it's it's a control. What it proves is that that's not about the money. Right. It's about the control. Absolutely. It's about the mind control. Well, here's things that are, are about the money. Right. Um, they own universities. Yeah. They could easily just be giving their their membership free college education. Sure. Right. Yeah. Like that, that's something they could totally just do. Yep. That would not be a hard thing at this point because Harvard endowment, everyone. Yeah, exactly. 40 some odd mil, uh, 40, what was it? 41 million 40 or billion, billion. You mean billion? Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. What would you do with $41 million? Let's <laughs> jump change. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can educate what four people at Harvard for that. Forget it. <laughs> Anyway, listen, kids, I'm sure you have some thoughts on this. We'd love to hear it. Uh, Please write into us. Podcast at thankgodimatheist.com is the email address. And you could you could call us. Yes. Right? The telephone number is 424-666-8442. Yeah. Leave us a voicemail message. We'll play it on the show. Not necessarily, but we might. Anyway. Okay. I mean. <laughs> Not making any promises. Anyway, uh, go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash TGI Atheist. Click on the like button. And while you're there, search for the TGIA Members Only Lounge and request to join. Yep. Uh, hey, speaking of Facebook, thanks so much to Mackenzie for all of her continued hard work on the Facebook page. Thanks to Amy and Danny for working on the uh, Members Only Lounge. And a big thanks goes out to the Red Rock Hot Club and to Gordon Johnston for the use of their music. And thanks so much to all of you for tuning in. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.